All right, sick. <laughs> we are back, and somebody has returned to the realm of uh, making videos. So Hi, friend. Uh, uh, I'll just let him introduce himself, then I'll introduce me, and then kind of what the plan is. Cool. Uh, yeah, uh, it's JK. It's been a while. Um, those of you who don't know me, I am the coach of the Minnesota Mamoswine, formerly the Fargo Flygons, Farmington Flygons. Those are kind of been my my team so far this year. This coach, uh, uh, season three or no, yeah, two, S season two champion. Yeah. Um, that I butchered that intro, but <laughs> my name is JK Josh for short. Uh, Minnesota Mammoth Swines here, excited to do some content creation once again. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Uh, I am Ark NK. You guys know me by now. I think, like I say in every video now, we're far past introductions. Um, welcome to APDL Season 4. Honestly, the most preseason hype that we've had for any season so far. Um, yeah, I'm so so what we're going to do today is we're kind of just going to run through. Uh, we're going to do a little draft recap. And then uh, we had five coaches vote on preseason power rankings, uh, which are mostly subjective, I would say. Um, and they're definitely not supposed to be taken like law, <laughs> I guess you could say. But uh, kind of just a, a fun little prediction for the season. So, uh, yeah, I guess without further ado, we'll just go through each team, uh, talk about their draft a little bit and... Uh, we'll get the ball rolling on this. Yeah, let's do it. So we'll go ahead and start with the North Dakota Noiverns. I'll let Josh take the lead, and we'll just bounce back and forth. Okay, yeah. The um, Montana so Milk Dance. <laughs> oh. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, North Dakota Noiverns. Um, I, I like this draft um, quite a bit. Um, it, it's definitely in my my top half, I believe. I gotta pull up my uh, what I actually submitted for mm -hmm. the power rankings. Um, I should do that on this monitor. But I, there's a couple of things on this team that I really really like. Um, number one, he's got a pretty like a pretty good bulk across both physical and special defense. Um, there's a lot of things that have, you know, above 80, above 90 uh, in, in those defense stats. Um, and I think as far as like type diversity goes, it's it, it's a pretty good draft. Mm -hmm. um, the things that I'm really excited to see, um, you know, just like some solid, uh, just like, you know, type null being so flexible as it is, you know, he's always got like the, that last piece of the puzzle when it comes to like the type chart for the week um it's going to be a really big um you know wild card i think as far as like his entire draft goes i love the spiritum pick um you know armaldo is something that i, I thought about drafting myself um and i i just like am am like sitting really I, I don't I don't know the exact way to, to say it, but I, I feel really confident in like how well rounded this draft is. It's not mm -hmm. over the top crazy good, but it's definitely like a solid mid tier draft, and I think there's a lot of potential here. Yeah, I, I definitely think that Edol, the coach, uh, taking his first step into to APDL, I think that uh, he did a pretty decent job, uh, and we'll talk a lot over the course of the video on. Um, how the stat distribution in the, the PU league is like very subpar. So things that like didn't get uh, like a second look before are going to be like towards the top of our quote unquote tier list, I guess you could say. Um, it'll also be really interesting. There's a fair amount of like not fully evolved Pokemon in this tier too that will be really interesting to see how people use. Uh, Type Null and like Zuelos on this team in particular. Uh, I'm interested in seeing Contrary Malamar. Think that that would be really cool too but yeah, yeah that is the north dakota noivers let's move on to uh, a very creatively named team uh, of delwyn james potter coached by charlos uh, also you'll notice with all the picks um, they are in order the left side being the odd picks the right side being the even picks so Pasimian was taken pick one kofor gregas two shuckle three and so on so um Charlos's draft was uh, an interesting one, and I'm I'm 
seeing a lot of water weakness right off the bat. Uh, kind of interesting that he opted to go both with Kofagrigus and Runarigus. Um, yeah. I really do like the the Passimian and Flareon picks. Buffalint is really cool. Uh, it got some like decent bulk all around. Something that I was looking into uh, in particular as well. Um, but I think a Lowland Dugtrio and Wigglytuff, like the last two picks of his draft, could honestly like put in a, a little more work than I think people expect. I don't know what your thoughts are on this draft. Yeah, so I, I think right off the bat, I think this is a, a story of not a lot of type diversity, which you already kind of touched on. Um, water being a huge weakness across the board for, for the overall draft. Um, and then, you know, in, in looking at the stats for his Mons, like, it's either... You know, when you look at the, the six different, you know, categories, HP, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed, a lot of it is split, like, either really, really high for some of its stats, and then really, really low for the other half. Right. So, like, you know, one thing that really concerns me is, like, his speed tiers are not good. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a slow-ass team. Mm -hmm. Like, he's got three Pokemon that have a, over 80 speed, um, and that that is definitely concerning for me. There's a lot of bulk uh, in the defensive side here, uh, just kind of natural bulk. Um, and like you said, I, I think Passimian is a great pick, uh, and then, you know, a Wigglytuff, Alola, and Dugtrio, I think was a, a really good way to end the draft for, for Harry. And it kind of like shored up some of the things that I think like trying to build out like a a fairy steel maybe need to go and look for a dragon to round mm -hmm. it out kind of core. Um, so you know I'm, I'm not thrilled at you know the overall look and feel of the team, but there's mm -hmm. definitely pieces that I'm really like yes, those were great picks. I want to see what he can do with it. I'm just afraid that like we're gonna see the same six mons every week. Right. And maybe Ditto has uh some potential to kind of swing things in his favor and just be like that sleeper pick each week coming in with like a choice scarf. But uh alongside both of or a lot of his mons being slowed, I think both uh Kofagregus and Runarigus have access to Trick Room. Don't quote me on that, but perhaps that could be a strategy as well. But that's Delwin James Potter. Let's move on to the real DJ and the Laughlin Laurentis. Um, wow. Let's see, <laughs> just got a, got, a, got a Discord message. Uh, I'll let a you take the lead on this one. A chef's kiss for, for DJ here. Um, this is my number one draft uh, out, of, out of the 14 teams. Um, definitely was uh, the overall favorite across the board, and maybe that's a little spoilers for the power rankings at the end of the video, but um, I, I love the just the overall like well-roundedness of this draft. I mean, there's things that I'm looking here, like, okay, Rabambi has incredible speed, great special attack, and then access to like sticky webs. Um, you know, Electivire is a monster in this tier, I think. <laughs> it, it definitely has the potential to be, you know, as much as we meme above it in the other seasons. Um, you know, stuff like the Appleton, uh, I think, has uh, a chance to be a really big player on his team. Um, it's a, an interesting typing with, uh, you know, that Grass Dragon. It's, you know, uh, an Ice-type sneezes on it and it dies, but other than that, like, He's got a lot of really great pieces. You know, Skunk Cake for that hazard removal. Um, Raboot, I think, is a super underrated pick, mm -hmm. and that was, like, one of his last ones. Um, it's basically, you know, just like JV Cinderace, and if you slap, like, you know, the right item on it, that could, like, pop off and, and be kind of nuts. It's got access to Libero, so, like, that in itself is, is crazy scary. Mm -hmm. Um I just I, I think that there's a lot of really good things about this draft, and I'm uh, I'm scared, especially because it's DJ as the pilot. Mm -hmm. I think this is a, a top team right off the bat. Yeah, I uh, I don't really have a whole lot else to add. Um, you know, DJ uh, 
takes a lot of his experience from the doubles format, um, but he's proven in the past that he, he can win in singles. He was the season one champion, just won our doubles league. Uh, so he's a two-time champion and um, he's kind of got a, a bit of a target on his back. I know that I always look forward to playing him. So he threw together a really solid team um, and we'll see where it places later on. But um, this, I would say, is, is one of the uh, better teams put together. But Let's talk about another newcomer, but has eons, and I mean eons of singles experience. Frozen uh, and the Carolina Cherims. I believe Frozen told me that he's got like seven or eight plus years of competitive Pokemon in singles. Um, so he <laughs> definitely has a creative mind. Uh, sniped a few picks for me. I was looking to get Claydol, Ludicolo, but um, when I look at Frozen's draft, I... I'm both puzzled and very intrigued um, because some of the pieces look like they're not like meant to fit together. But uh, I think in the right situation, I, they they definitely could. I think Sableye having access to Prankster was very, very strong. Uh, Altari in the past has been known to throw out some cheesy options. Um, Ludicolo can like run both a very offensive set and has some good bulk to it too. Claydol is so good in this tier, I think. Um, with levitate and access to dual screens, very decent bulk. You could body press, you could store power, you could go rocks, you could go rapid spins, you could suicide lead it. Like the amount of utility in that Pokemon alone is something that's going to have to be a pretty big cornerstone for people to prepare for each week. So, and then Arc Dissolt, we all know about Arc Dissolt from <laughs> from season one. Arc Dissolt, do indeed go burr. But um, that brings up the idea of manual weather as well um as you guys know in the pu tier weather setting abilities are banned so um it'll be interesting to see if like manual weather and just like running the move like hail or rain dance is something that people lean into and if it works or not so um yeah it's kind of like one of those risky picks that like you know if it works we're all gonna be like man frozen was just like on another level with this draft mm -hmm. and if it doesn't you know we're gonna be like that was a pretty terrible first pick um i i don't know there's not much more to say i love that he picked uh number uh, there's two picks that i really love number one um waylord <laughs> is just ridiculous mm -hmm. um I have no idea if it's good, but I love that he picked it up. Mm -hmm. And then I, I gotta just throw out like respect for the mascot pick because yes. Cherum was, you know, looking at it from just like the outside looking in, it looks like a pretty like average Pokemon, and right. I respect the fact that he uh, he went the mascot pick to re to end his draft. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Let's move on to uh, a very funny <laughs> put together team. Uh, oh and that's uh, Ryan, aka The Whisperer, with Nanner Nation. Uh, chose Lunatone and Thwacky right off the bat. I honestly love the Thwacky pick. Um, access to, like, Grassy Glide and, like, Grassy Terrain off of, like, Grassy Surge. And, like, Eviolite, too. Like, Thwacky could do a lot of damage. Um, Electabuzz, I think, is also, like, a really, really solid option. We talked about how good Electivire could be in this tier. Um, and I think Electabuzz is no different. Same with like the other end of the stick too, with like Magmortar and Magmar, which were both drafted as well by other teams. Um, I think El Creamy is like a prime time fairy type where there, <laughs> in a draft where there were very, very few options for one. Uh, Shedinja is super funny. <laughs> I don't know how good like Shedinja is. You gotta be ready for entry hazards, but I mean, Apart from that, if if the dude, and I said in our group chat, if the dude gets a Melton sweep at any point during the season, he just wins the league and we'll be done because yeah. that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I, there, there's like, a, this is kind of, you know, we talked about uh, a couple of teams beforehand, I, you know, like liking pieces of this draft. Um, and uh, like the Thwacky, I think has more utility than we realize. Um, I hate the Shedinja pick. I'm just going to be honest with you. I hate it. I hate it. Um, I also am, like, very, like, not sure about Oranguru. Like, mm -hmm. it it could be, like, just straight-up donkey. 
Yeah, but it could also be like, you know, a, a pretty solid bulky option. Um, I love my favorite pick out of this entire draft for, for uh, Nanner Nation was the Sneasel, actually. Mm-hmm. Like, I choice banded beat up with one of the fastest Pokemon in the t- in the format. Like, mm-hmm. base 115 is like in the top, you know, five top to 10, 10 probably. Like that Sneasel, I think is going to be scary, especially as like a lead where, you know, you just like click beat up, get a kill and then like die the next turn. Like, mm-hmm. I think it, it, I think like Sneasel could be super scary. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I'm looking forward to, to seeing Ryan's first APDL experience and how he pieces things together. So good luck to him uh, throughout the course of the season. Let's talk about a newly rebranded team formerly the kindred kingdras now the jamestown jolteons coached by measly what do you have to to say about the jolteons also get a mascot pick yeah yeah so i i think there's a couple of things here um so peyton got uh like i think the wildest spread as far as like where the votes came in in the power mm-hmm. ranking we'll talk about that later but i i actually you know some people think his draft was really really good i think it was more average than we think um had, but definitely towards like the top half of the bracket mm-hmm. um jolteon is incredible like it's a mascot pick but it's also like a super fast electric type that just kills people um so i i love that pick um I'm interested to see like what Lapras can do, um, and you know, there's a couple other things that um, I'm like, okay, yes, this is like a, a really well-rounded draft. Um, his speed tiers look pretty, you know, from the outset it looks like a slower team, but it's got like you know Jolteon at 130, who I think is the fastest PU Pokemon, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, Galarian and Rabidash, I know absolutely zero of, but I think it, it could be a pretty good Pokemon you talked about. Not a lot of good fairy types in the format, so like that's definitely going for him. Um, Arctivish has awesome stats all the way around, so I, there's definitely pieces of this that, that really, like, I'm like yes, this is going to be dangerous, but it's, he's also got some overlap in some type weaknesses that I think... Um, shouldn't be overlooked. I mean, I see grass right off the bat as being something that's like going to be tough for him to overcome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I I think that his draft was very solid, and a lot of the stuff that I think he's going to run is pretty situational. Mm-hmm. Uh, with that being said, I think that is going to be a very difficult team to prep for if you're playing against him. Um, I love the Lapras pick. Palisand is super, super good in this format, I think. Um, Galarian, Rabidash, and Jolteon being as fast as they are hit really hard. Like Kabutops as well has some really solid use. If you if you can find a way to get the rain up with some Kabut, like Kabutops can just like tear through people. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how the Jolteons do this season. Let's uh, Let's move on. And I will let you talk about your draft. Okay, here we go. Um, so uh, I gotta pull up like my sheet here too because mm-hmm. I, I I did obviously the full breakdown for me. Um, okay, so going into this draft, I really wanted to look at you know having like a really solid core. Um, and you know traditionally for like the singles leagues, you want to look at like a, a fire water grass core and a fairy dragon steel core. Well. The fairy dragon steel was just like it fell apart as soon Not as the draft existed. started. It mm-hmm. just it just fell apart. You know the the amount of like good fairy types in the format, good steel types in the format, good dragons like very very little. And people were picking you know the the things that I thought looked good right away. So like that that option gone. Like forget mm-hmm. about it. On the flip side, I got three for three in my first three picks that I wanted for my Firewater Grass core. Um, so I have I have Caracosta, Charizard, and Trevenant, which I think is spooky good uh, from like a, a just a base to build a team around. Um, Charizard, I cannot believe I actually got it. I figured that would be like one of the first Pokemon to go off the board. 
Um, Caracosta's got stupid defense. Trevenant, I think, is better than people give it credit for. Uh, and then I picked up a lot of utility along the way. You know, Bolt on is super fast uh, at 121. Uh, could be a mix attacker. Him on top's one of the premier spinners in the format, I think. Um, there's definitely some things that I'm, I'm not super thrilled with or like could have gone better in the back half of my draft. But overall, I think I got the, the core that I wanted, the defense that I need, but also just like sneaky offense all the way through. So um, I, I don't think by any means I had the best draft, but I definitely like I, I'm super confident with how things went and I, I am not like... I think like ten, eight out of ten picks were like mm-hmm. really, really good. Mm, definitely, and I would agree with you too. I I was surprised that Charizard lasted the first round as well, um, but I like Hitmon top. I used that in our last singles league, and it was one of my favorite Pokemon to use. Like period. Um, I think that you can do some really funny stuff with like Drift Blim, Stoutland having Intimidate's also really, really strong. But uh, yeah, no, I thought that your draft was really, really solid, and you said you were you were making your personal draft of you later on tonight so look forward to to seeing that oh yeah uh so let's move on then and let's talk about quincy's draft i think that quincy's draft was very interesting i thought i loved his first like four picks and then for me personally i think it kind of just like got steadily steadily like more average towards the end uh, I love Gallade. Uh, it's his favorite favorite Pokemon, I think, uh, is one of his one of his top tier picks. And Quincy actually uh, is looking to start making some content this season, so that should be pretty cool. Yeah, I think yeah, Wishy Washy yeah. is very very cool in this format. Scyther is like yeah. the best bug type in the format period, I think. Um, just like Choice Banded, like Dual Wing Beat's gonna destroy people. Dusclops is very strong. Um, Drampa, I think, is really cool. Meow Stick with access to screens. Raichu has been really solid in the past. Lorantis has Contrary. Double is actually, like, surprisingly thick. <laughs> and yeah. um, I think people might underestimate it a little bit. But I, I, I would give Quincy, like, a really solid draft. But I think that it could have been just a little bit better. This is a top five draft for me. Mm. I, I love what he did with this. Uh, Gilead, I've used before. Um, it's thick, actually, um, on the special defeat defense side, and you slap an assault vest on it, and they can eat those special hits for days. Mm. Um, I love the speed tiers that he has covered with this team. Um, he's got four Pokemon with over 100 speed, he's got two in the 80s, and then he's got some of those slower mons in case he runs into Trick Room or somebody trying to abuse the fact that he is so fast. Um, the wishy-washy scares the death out of me. I mean, like, base 140 attack and special attack and base 130 defense and 135 special defense. That thing is a monster until its schooling gets broke. Um, Dusclops with an Eviolite is spooky good, pun intended. Um, I think he got one of the better fire types in Ninetales. Uh, you know, even with Drought being banned, I think Ninetales is actually still really good. Um, the Raichu, I think, is going to cause problems. Uh, you know, fast electric types in draft formats are always good. Um, you know, I, I, I don't really see, like, anywhere in this draft that he went wrong. I mean, you know, yes, they're, they're not the, the best top tier, you know, S tier mons, mm-hmm. but he's got a lot of good stuff, and I would give him, like, a solid draft rating. And I think you're right. The double, I think, is better than people will mm. will originally say. It's fast. It's got 88 speed, mm. and for this tier, that's that's cooking. Mm-hmm. So sure. uh, I, I'm excited to see him uh, maybe get some some double sweeps or something like that. Sure. I have no idea what he's going to try and do with it, but <laughs> I, I love this draft. Mm-hmm. Well, let's kick it on over to another team here, the Midwestern Warriors, coached by Jackson. Uh, for me personally, I think that even I underrated his draft. I may be in, in the minor- like minority here, but I think that Jackson's draft was very good, actually. I think Magmortar is like one of the best Pokemon in the format. Unpheasant is like a decent flying type as well and like hits decently hard. Licky Licky's gonna like 
take any kind of a weather strat out of the way, in my opinion. Compound Eyes Butterfree with like Sleep Powder, Clang gets access to Eviolite. Uh, Gigalith can like, can just run Sandstorm with like a Smooth Rock. And like Sandslash has uh, Sand Rush. So like there could be some ideas there. And I think Golduck is like just genuinely really solid as well. So um, in the three seasons that Jackson's been playing, I think that this is probably his best draft personally. I would agree with you. I still think it's got problems though. I, you know, I, I'm talking a lot about stats and about speed in, in particular. His speed tiers are rough. Um, he's got one Pokemon above 90 and the rest is like 85 and below just wait for that clang shift gear though <laughs> i i i know but it it i just i'm not i'm not super convinced yet the other thing that i want to say is like type diversity is is a little rough for this this one i mean he's got one two three four pokemon five that are weak against water ish um I, I know like the premier water types are there's not a lot of them it, that got drafted but like huh, it, just like having that many stacked up that could mm -hmm. could have that weakness is is a little concerning to me i do agree with you i think like the gigalith sand slash combo could be really really good um I, I, mag mortar obviously is a stud in the format and like licky licky i've used before it's bulky it's you know it, it's got some very good utility mm -hmm. uh but I, i'm gonna have to wait and see on this one mm -hmm. i think that maybe with like one or two really solid like free agent swaps or changes to the team in general could kind of push it towards the next level yeah i think i think this is like especially the team that has the most potential to like rapidly shoot towards the top. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to Jackson uh, playing uh, in this season. I think that he's going to do well. Uh, yeah, let's so. kick it on over now to another member returning this season with Ruben, our favorite oh. dinosaur damage with Tyrannosaurus Rex. I'll let you take the lead on this one. Uh, I'm, I'm going to sound like a broken drum here, but speed mm -hmm. it, it will kill this team almost I, he's got the Lopony, which hits 105 um and, and the phalanx at 75 the rest is under 50 Oof. 55 and 55 and under mm -hmm. so everything is gonna outspeed this guy um beyond that i think he loaded up on physical attackers and is a little lacking in the special attack side he mm -hmm. He only has the Turtonator really as like a good special attacker. The rest of them are all physical. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think like that is going to be his downfall or like the thing that he needs to adjust right away. Um, I think on the physical side, attack and defense, he's stacked top to bottom with the draft. Um, but on the special side, I think he could struggle a little bit. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. But if we learned anything about Ruben from his last season is that he's very unpredictable and he finds a way to make his Jurassic Park themed everything <laughs> uh, into a very exciting thing to watch. So looking forward to seeing what Tyrannosaurus Rex put together for the season. Let's move on into a couple more of our Canadian brothers. Uh, starting with the Edmonton Ice Cues. I like... This is a Sean team. I, I don't know how else to explain <laughs> it. Yeah. It's a Sean team. Uh, Cramorant, I was like kind of looking at. I think Galvantula is going to be a terror mm -hmm. <laughs> against people. Uh, just Absolutely. access to like sticky webs and just how hard it hits in general. I think Clefairy is super underrated. Um, Delibird is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> Lowland Persian, I've, I've heard from DJ, can be pretty decent in doubles. Uh, cradle -y could be really annoying with like suction cups and just walling people out heat more i think is like one of the most underwhelming fire types and it looks like he kind of just picked it up because it was a fire type and he didn't have one yet um but it's it's it's, it's hard to say i feel like sean always kind of starts the season like as a predicted like middle of the road pick and he just kind of figures it out towards the end of the year. And then by, by the time we roll around to playoffs, nobody wants to run into him. So um, any any thoughts on the Edmonton Ice Cues, which I spelled wrong, by the way. 
I feel very I feel very whelmed by this draft. I, I'm not I'm not underwhelmed. I'm not overwhelmed. I'm just very whelmed. Um, mm-hmm. I I love the Galvantula pick. It's incredible, and you know, compound eyes thunder just will wreck people. Um, and you can run you know focus ash choice scarf uh, is like not needed um, because it's it's got you know super good speed. Um, so you can put all of that extra, you know, item usage or investment into attack. And I think, like you said, going to terrorize people. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted Perserker, oddly enough. Uh, so I think that's a, a pretty underrated pick. Um, and then, like, the, the grapple lock, I think, is... <laughs> <laughs> it's bulkier than I realized. Uh, and, and, you know, the fact that it's just pure fighting type is interesting. Um, the Delibird is a straight meme, and I bet it's the first thing he gets rid of. But uh, you know, like you gotta respect it. I do, I do. <laughs> uh, I just, I, I feel very whelmed. Mm-hmm. Well, let's flip the coin on over and talk about the Kalamazoo Raichu. The he's Garrett and I kind of resonate with each other on the always a bridesmaid, never a bride. With me, it's losing first round of playoffs like every season. Uh, with him, it's getting to two grand finals and not quite squeaking it across against the same person. Yeah. Um, I I really like Garrett's draft, and he was a sniper <laughs> in taking things away from people, I will say. Uh, took Magmar literally right before I was going to take it. And I think Magmar is actually spooky good, and the tier Kadabra could be very, very solid. I think Whimsicott's going to be so annoying to prep for. Um, Scrafty is obviously super strong. Frostlass having like spikes in like Destiny Bond, like Suicide Lead could be really solid too. Um, and Lantern, you know all about Lantern. <laughs> so, um, yes, sir. Orbeetle, I think oddly enough, could be really good too. So I think that everything on his team just kind of makes sense. It pieces together like pretty nicely. And uh, I think that I think that he's going to be one to look out for. Yeah, he has, if I'm not mistaken, the fastest team out of everybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's got, you know, a a ton of speed uh, in a lot of different threats on his team. Uh, And he's got access to Tailwind with Whimsicott to make everything just faster than, than, you know, anybody can deal with. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a lot of things on this draft that I was also looking at. Kadabra, Frostlass, Scrafty. Um, so you talk about him being a sniper, absolutely, mm. even more so than than just taking away from you. Um, I think Magmar is super good. I, you know, I think when you talk about Magmortar, Electivire, and then like their two like pre evolutions with elect, um, Magmar and, and uh, Electabuzz. Electabuzz, yeah, thank you. Mm. <laughs> um, I, I think all of those mons are really good, and they landed on some good teams. Um, I. Archaeops is interesting. <laughs> I think it could cause some issues, uh, but like Defeatist is such a bad ability. Yeah. Like I, I, I don't know. Lantern, there's it's a fun Lantern fact. Might, no. Sorry. Uh, no, there's a fu- there's a fun fact about Archaeops. Uh, I chose, or we we kind of worked through some ideas and chose to ban like all the legendary Pokemon and anything that was over base 550 in stats. Are except for Archeops. Archeops has the highest base stat total of any Pokemon in the league at like 567. Yeah. But it is purely just because of Defeatist that we're like, it's, yeah, okay. It's it's so bad. Mm. Um, Lantern is my favorite pick. Uh, that thing is amazing, and I'm scared to have to go up against it if I ever do. Mm. Uh, and like the Orbeetle, dual screens, body press. I, I, it's just out. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think Garrett drafted a very, very solid team. For sure. Let's move on. We only got two teams left. The next one being mine with the Blackthorn City Blastoise. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on my draft. Uh, I, I love your draft. Um, I, I think there is not really like a weak point from top to bottom outside of maybe like Hauntar being, being super frail. Um, you know, I, I there's a lot of really good things like Serena is bulky and scary. Um, that, that, okay, so if I could sum up your team, it's natural bulk that hits hard. 
Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you, you don't have like insanely like uh, super overpowered or like Pokemon that are have all of their stats like thrown into just two categories. It's pretty well rounded. Um, you've got some some good, uh, you know, type synergies that work well with each other. Um, not really like a true core uh, from top to bottom, but like you and I play in week one and I'm finding it very hard to prep for mm-hmm. you. Um, just, you know, threats across the board that also can like take a hit. And that's, I think, super impressive for like this tier and finding, you know, the, the natural bulk that you did. Um, you do have some very like average speed out mm-hmm. there. Um, you know, nothing that hits a hundred uh on the on the base speed tiers but like you know when you're when you're dealing with stuff that has priority or you have you know the ability to take a hit and then just like revenge kill i think it's super scary Mm -hmm. yeah i and that's kind of the one thing that i really wanted to do with my draft is i wanted i wanted versatility in team building i wanted my team to be hard to prep for so i mean it's like you get things like hitmonchan uh kangaskhan magneton serena dreadnought executor like all of those can run either a defensive or an offensive set so i think there's a lot of animidity or i think i'm saying that right um and there's a lot of like creative prowess that i can put into my team building which i think is going to be really fun but um yeah I, i think i got three mons uh, that I was looking to get in in my pre-draft, and yeah. and filled the other seven up. But I think that everyone has the role to fill. I think my favorite Pokemon on this team is Kangaskhan. I think Kangaskhan is spooky good, and uh, I'm hoping that I can I can put some put some um, meaning behind behind those words for sure. But I was pretty happy with uh, how I made out with the draft, and I'm looking forward to seeing what I can do with it. Heck yeah. And, Let's transition to our last team. Quick quill, quick, quick quill, quick kills, Montana mill tanks. What do you got to say about the mill tanks? The farm. <laughs> yes. Um, so I actually like don't mind this draft. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think I, I gave it, let's see, Montana mill tank. I, you know, it was in my bottom half for, for the power rankings this week. Um, just because I kind of like with Ruben, um, if you look at kind of the, the split physical versus special, a lot of his team got dumped into the physical attack stat mm-hmm. and not a lot into special attack. And overall, it's a pretty frail team. Mm-hmm. Like he does not have a lot of like what I would consider like walls. It's a lot of like and it's a lot of offense thrown on one team and not a lot of defense and that yeah. might be that might be fine uh, you know he might surprise us and, and be able to withstand the thing but like i think a team that like yours like we just talked about that has a ton of natural bulk and you could put investment into those defenses i think could end up walling out his team and just the fact that they're so frail it, it concerns me a little bit and that's kind of why he's in the bottom half but he's got really good distribution for speed and like a ton of physical threats like a ton mm-hmm. um like i would say nine out of the 10 mons that he drafted can be physical attackers mm-hmm. and that is ridiculous right uh, but i also like i said it, it kind of makes it a little easier to prep for mm-hmm. yeah I, I would agree i think that like there's a very glass cannon esque feel to it, um, but like his speed tiers are, are pretty decent, and the like you said, the things hit really hard. Like Lycan Rock Luxray, just on their own. Like I feel like Guts Luxray could be very good if you can get like an agility up or or something like a Tailwind maybe. Um, that thing is just gonna go to town on people. It's got a great move pool. Um, I think Flapple's really strong. Sandslash is really, really good. Lycan Rock, like I, 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 I am in. I would, I would say that I just, uh, I agree with a lot of what you said, and I, I think that he's gonna do pretty well. He's very excited to, to get into the draft format and everything. So, I'm definitely looking forward to see what he can do with it. But yeah, my, my two favorite picks on this, this team are the first and the last pick, the Miltank. Mm-hmm 
for being what I would consider like a physical wall, it's got base 105 defense. It's got 100 base speed mm -hmm. and 95 base HP. It's fast. Like it's fast and it's mm -hmm. bulky. Uh, so like that's a great pick. And then Quillfish with Intimidate is, I think, way better than people think. Mm -hmm. um, so I, 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 yeah, those are those are my two favorite picks off of that team. For sure. And with that, that's all 14 teams out of the way. So there's only one thing left to do. Uh, the the moment that we have all been waiting for, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, as I said before, uh, in, during our power rankings, uh, they're voted on by five coaches. And we average them all together. And we get kind of a number that we piece together at the end for each team. Um, so determining those scores and uh, based off of the draft review and everything, we have devised a preseason power rankings poll keep in mind power rankings does not mean that you have necessarily the best team perhaps it's maybe the best potential um the most creativity the most like creative team building opportunities a, a lot of things can be factored into the decision so uh we'll just go through uh we'll kind of bounce back and forth and just kind of reiterate some key points uh we'll keep it brief for the most part um but yeah without further ado pick 14 and coming in at the very bottom is delwyn james potter coached by charlos uh anything to say or add on djp yeah you know i i think we kind of covered most of what we needed to with with his team um you know i i, I think there are some really good parts of his draft and like there's some potential out of this team but i think it's a little too one-dimensional and i think it's type diversity is uh, a little rough mm -hmm. for sure coming in at the 13th spot we have <laughs> the nanner nation um i i will say that I think Garrett pointed out as well that I don't think that he has one single Pokemon that's above base 500 in its total stats. Um, so, he, but in in my opinion, I think he kind of embodies a little bit of an underdog role, and it's clear that he's in it to have fun and have a good time with it. So, I think that he could potentially move up and surprise some people. But uh, like you said before, there's some things on the team that are just kind of a little too on the average side, and. Um, maybe are better suited for other formats but uh could could be totally wrong about it moving on to number 12 we have the midwestern warriors yeah i, I think we we kind of already talked about how he's got i think in the bottom half here some of the biggest potential to shoot up the rankings very mm -hmm. quickly uh with maybe just like a roster move here or there i think there's some really great pieces to his team uh and then you know if he can kind of diversify a little bit on the typing that could do a lot and you know jackson's improved every single season that he's participated in uh and i'm expecting that to trend to continue mm -hmm. for sure coming in at number 11 we have dinosaur damage and the tyrannosaurus rex i think you hit the nail on the head earlier i think speed and lack of any kind of like special attacker on this team is the two big weaknesses right off the bat um but like i said before too uh ruben has a tendency to make uh something out of nothing a lot and um plays very unpredictably so i think that um while he might be in the bottom half for the start of this one uh i think that he he could definitely surprise some people hit a wild card playoff spot uh in our last singles league so uh i would definitely look out for him coming in at number 10 we have <laughs> the farm the farm the montana mill tanks yeah i we just talked about it need some special uh attackers and defenders and defenders especially um you know i think if you can can move the needle a little bit away from just the extreme physical on the attack side and go a little bit more towards the middle and maybe get a couple of special attackers maybe another special defender uh, i think that could help this team quite a bit uh and then there's you know what we talked about there's some scary things on this team uh, i just think like the the stat distribution and what these pokemon are makes it a little too easy to prep for right now mm -hmm. Coming in at number nine, we have Edol and the North Dakota Neuverns. Uh, we talked about it at the beginning of the video. I think that 
uh, for having no draft league experience that he pieced together a pretty, pretty decent team. So, um, apart from everything that we talked about earlier, I think that, um, maybe, and nobody knows how much of a knowledge base he has in this sort of thing. Um, so he's kind of a, a dark horse role at the moment, I think for me personally, at least. And, uh, the last time I said that somebody was going to be a dark horse was Quincy and look at how far that he's come <laughs> in the past couple of seasons. So, uh, hopefully the North Dakota, no Everns uh, surprise some people this season. Coming in at number eight, rounding out our bottom half are the Edmonton Ice Cues. I, f- I feel like I can't say anything because like Sean has proven every single season that he can go from, you know, a, a very underwhelming draft to like shooting to the top four mm. uh, very, very quickly. Um, I, I just think like, like I said, I, I felt very whelmed by this draft. There's nothing that really stands out as like a true, you know, oh my God, this is like a threat. Um, other than like maybe Galvantula. Uh, but even then, like the dude's going to find a way to piece it together. So um, I, I don't expect him to be in number eight very long. Mm-hmm. For sure. Always embodies the comeback kid role. Um, going on into our top half though, at number seven, we have Frozen and the Carolina Cherims. Uh, like I said before, I feel like he's got a lot of interesting pieces on his team that like don't look like they should fit together. Um, but just based off of the fact that I know he has uh, a very extensive amount of experience with singles, um, he's going to find a way to make it work. And I think that his team building and, and that experience will definitely carry him a long way. And um, I'm definitely, I believe he's in Division 1 with you. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad that I don't have to run into him anytime soon. <laughs> Um, for sure. But uh, number six, running out our top six, we have Quincy and the Lottie Daddies. Oh, Quincy drafted so well. I'm just looking at his team again and like the stats and, and where he's at. And <clears throat> lots of bulk, lots of great options. There's a couple things that I think are um, he got steals uh, and where he drafted some things. And I, I, this is like I said, I put Quincy in the top four uh, on my personal you know, power rankings chart. And I think this is definitely one of the teams that we need to watch. Uh, and like Quincy is a, a great preparer, uh, a great, you know, a great strategist. And I think like this is a scary team. Mm-hmm. For sure. Excited to see the content rolling out of him too. Yeah. Uh, moving on into our top five. Now we have the Kalamazoo Raichu. I feel like Garrett is always just, pushing the top like three or four like every single season even last season when he started like 0-3 in doubles found a way to get back all the way to grand finals and it's like I think it speaks to his creativity I am looking forward to him taking more of that creative route this season as well I I loved his draft like things like Lantern are just gonna give people uh, quite the headache uh, both Edmonton and Kalamazoo in Division 2 uh, so We'll, we'll always look forward to a good old Canadian clash at one point or another, but uh, excited for Garrett and the Kalamazoo Raichu, a solid placing for them. I definitely had them in the top five in my rankings. I um, think that it's a pretty appropriate spot for them. So let's move on into number four. Uh, we actually have a tie. I'll let you talk about both of these, uh, but with a tied score, both the Jamestown Jolteons and your own Minnesota Mamoswines. I think um, starting with Peyton and, and Jamestown, I think, you know, we talked about how um, like Jolteon is going to be a threat. Galarian Rabidash has just really solid stats all the way around and, and like a good fairy type is a good fast fairy type is very like um, very niche and very like I, definitely something that he will be able to find ways to, to use to his advantage. Um, you know, the other stuff in his draft, you know, you talked about the Kabutops, if he ever gets Swift Swim active. Um, I, I think it's a very solid draft overall. Um, it's kind of feast or famine as far as like, you know, how good these Mons are. And I think, uh, I, I expect Peyton to do well. He always does. Um, he's shown time and time again that he's a, a top player and a top performer. And um, the, the draft has given him some potential here for sure. And then for me, you know, I, I, I'm a little biased, but I love my draft so much. I think a lot of the pieces fell into a place where I needed them to. 
um, and I think I've got versatility where I need it and utility where I need it, uh, and also just like, you know, uh, some things that if you don't prep for, like, could smash you in the face. Mm-hmm. Definitely excited to to kick it off in week one, the little interconference rivalry match for sure. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, moving on into our top two. In the number two spot, we have the Blackthorn City Blastoise. I, I kind of pride myself on being able to draft, like, a pretty good team every season. And every season, I think that I, like, in a roundabout way, I can accomplish what I need to. Um, I don't know if, I de- uh, if I'm if i the, the second best draft by, by any stretch of the imagination. I think a lot of the top, like, five or six are, like, very, very close together. Um, but like you said earlier, I, I love... The team that I put together, I love that I have like a lot of good natural bulk, a lot of versatility, um, stuff like Magneton can just like tear through people. I think Haunter, although it looks maybe a little bit out of place on the team, uh, can maybe surprise some people. Um, but yeah, but if, if I've learned anything, uh, a good draft does not necessarily mean a good result at the end of the season. So hopefully uh, the regular season goes well and I can finally win a playoff game and get the, the monkey off of my back. <laughs> but get the, um get the thwacky off your back yeah the thwacky off my back <laughs> um but yeah no i was uh it was pretty cool to see that um the coaches thought my my team was was deserving of a one of the top spots but coming in at the very top spot to no surprise like of anyone is the laughlin Laurentis. yeah i i DJ just is so good at putting a team together and putting pieces where he needs them. Um, you know, I, I, when you look at this draft, I don't think that there is a necessarily a chink in the armor, so to speak. I mean, I think even the things that look a little bit underwhelming probably have a really good role in what he's looking for. Um, and I think just overall, super solid draft, super solid as far as like the options and the ways that he can put pokemon into you know that that team of six uh and i expect him to be difficult to prep for extremely difficult to play against and if he doesn't just meme every week he can go (laughs) seven and oh yeah i definitely agree uh dj's (laughs) he's got a background in this uh what can we say Uh, he's been at the top every season um been in the grand finals every single season you've been the only person to top him um in that regard so uh kudos to dj and the laughlin Laurentis. but these are your final rankings for your preseason uh we'll try and do one of these videos every single week if we don't get a video in we'll at least get the rankings in the discord so you can see uh it's kind of just a little fun fun recap and we'll also do like game recaps and stuff and talk briefly about people's games but uh yeah so we're gonna cap it there we've been going for quite a while 52 minutes so uh i'll make sure to put timestamps in the video if maybe you're not interested in watching the whole thing and you just want to see what we said about your team i'll timestamp the video for you guys um but yeah any any final thoughts before we sign off i'm so stoked for this season it's so exciting to have 14 teams again uh you know doubles was a fun like palette cleanser but i'm ready to get back into it and have that really like you know this this league is definitely like for fun and there's like nothing riding on it but bragging rights but i i have come to really enjoy the competitiveness that happens every year and um or every season i guess we've been doing this for a little over a year straight um with the four seasons but i i'm really excited to get back into it i i think we started off uh with a very hype interconference game between you and me uh a little bummed that one of us has to start the year on a yeah. loss but mm-hmm. uh you know that's this is kind of how it is uh i love that we got the draft in in a week so kudos to everybody who um you know helped us make that as smooth and efficient as possible i think that was the best uh draft we've ever had mm-hmm. um definitely the the quickest uh and that was super appreciative um, and uh, I think there's not a lot of good free agents left, so we might see no. some trades. We might see like the most trades uh, we've ever seen this season because mm-hmm. uh, I'm looking at like the free agent list right now, and it is pretty pretty, 
Pretty slim pickings for it's sure. Pretty slim pickings. So uh, I, I think the format is going to be so fun. It's something different. I think it lended to a, a just a killer draft. Um, and I think it's we're going to be able to see some Pokemon that like don't get to shine, uh, and be the stars of the teams and, and be those star players. Uh, so I, I'm stoked. I, I can't wait for week one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. And on the draft too, I think this draft went faster than our doubles draft and there was only eight of us. So um, very appreciative of your guys being patient and dealing with me annoying you and pinging you like 15 times and DMing you to get your pick in. But um, once we get through that grind of a draft then it's uh it's just games after that it's a lot of fun so uh please get in touch with your week one opponent get that gameplay before next sunday um like i said in the other videos if you're not sure how to report scores just save the replay pop it in the discord one of us will do it for you um but i hope you guys are all excited as we are um this is quickly turned into something that um is just kind of a regular thing for us and it's been a lot of fun and I'm super stoked that we've gotten so many people involved with it and uh, they've had a good time with it. So um, we're going to continue to do this for God knows how long, but uh, we got seven weeks of regular season. The format's going to be super, super fun. It's going to lend to a lot of really exciting games, I think. And uh, yeah, looking forward to a nice, nice, fun season. And uh, there's no telling who's going to come out on top. So without further ado, we're going to wrap things up there just a little bit under an hour. Um, we'll see you back here next week, whether it's Josh, whether it's me, whether we have somebody else on. Um, maybe DJ finally gets a chance to be in a video <laughs> uh, for a change. But uh, yeah, got nothing else to say. We'll catch you guys later. Peace. Have Peace. fun.